This story is based on the above footage, where you saw a strange man scaring the hell out of the customers as well as employees. It's been two years since I had taken my job as a cashier at Kmart. Every day, we would face customers with bad attitudes and weird behavior, but nothing ever surpassed that one-time experience I had during my early days of joining here. Kmart is the biggest retail store in this town and is often filled with customers. A lot of people work here, among which Jenny and I manage the counters. She is a free-spirited woman and also pretty good at handling rude or weird customers. So when those two suspicious-looking men walked into the store, I called out to her. Jenny? Jenny? What happened? She replied while organizing the cash register. What do you think about those two men? Probably some homeless nut jobs. She went back to organizing the register, and I kept a close eye on them. The two men looked like a weird combination. One of them was excessively overweight and was wearing a white t-shirt with boxers. There were mustard and ketchup stains all over his clothes. Smeared ketchup was still hanging around his chin. The second guy had a well-built body. He was wearing a loose t-shirt with an old pair of jeans. Though everything seemed normal from his attire, his face had a strange look. His eyes were loitering everywhere, cluelessly. It was evident from their behavior that these two men weren't in the best condition of their lives, but who am I to judge people? Seriously, stop staring at them. We're only here to do our job, Camilla. Yeah, yeah, you're right. I'm sorry. Can you go check the storeroom for more pamphlets? Ms. Orbison wants us to distribute them to the customers, money-hungry woman. Yeah, I'll get them. Leaving her at the counter, I went to get the pamphlets. Our cleaning staff, Jeffrey and Samuel, were mopping the floors. They both smiled at me, and I smiled back. After five minutes, when I was walking back to the counter, the man smeared in ketchup approached me from behind. Excuse me, lady. You, Kmart lady. Hearing this, I turned back to talk to him. Are you talking to me? Yes. You are a Kmart employee and you are a lady. At least you look like one. <laughs> I'm sorry, but is this some kind of joke? Because if it is, it's not funny at all. Uh, is this uh, how... How you should be talking to us. Now, the other guy appeared, and both of them stared at me as if they had never seen a woman. Their eyes were scanning me as if they could see inside my clothes. The fat one wiped his face with his shirt and said, We just wanted to find the instant noodles. Can you help us, Kmart lady? The noodles are in the fifth aisle of the third left row in the corner, and my name is Camilla not Kmart lady. Whoa, why is she talking to us like that, huh? Why? Relax, Kyle. She means no harm. Thank you, Camilla, for your assistance. The fat guy began to walk, but his companion Kyle stood there, staring at me with angry eyes. He was breathing heavily, and I realized I had seriously pissed this customer off. I quickly went back to the counter and told everything to Jenny. What? No, Camilla, you cannot talk to the customers like that. No matter how rude they are, it's their money that pays our bills. I, I'm sorry, he was being... Look, Camilla, if you want this job, then bury your self-respect inside. I calmed myself down as I realized everything Jenny said was right. I need this job badly. I can't lose it because of some idiots. My anger slowly mellowed down and I started concentrating on work. Customers formed a queue and I started billing them one by one. Camilla was handling the cash and everything was in order until I saw those two freaks standing in line next. The fat guy was smiling at me in a very creepy way while Kyle kept his head down. Please, don't fuck this up, Jenny said to me in a low voice, and I braced myself for more insults. 
Slowly, they approached my counter. I didn't say anything and just quickly did my job. I handed them the receipt and waited for the customer behind them to move forward. But the guy didn't budge. The fat man stood still at my counter. He wasn't moving, even though he was done. Sir, you need to move so others can approach the counter. Oh, now she's calling me, sir. Did your boss give you some pep talk there, Barbie? <laughs> uh, enough is enough. Listen, you fatso, if you don't move away from my face right now, I'll make sure you get kicked out of here. Oh, why is she screaming like that? What the hell? Kyle, Kyle, just relax, man. It's all right. No, it's not! They think they can treat us like shit. I'll show them shit! Suddenly, this dude Kyle started acting up. He snapped out from nowhere, and his body started to shake and fidget uncontrollably. Everyone watched in shock as this man started to destroy the store while kicking and punching every single aisle. He ran like a maniac while screaming God knows what. Security! Security! Jenny started screaming for help, and I couldn't help but begin to cry. The fat guy sensed the unwanted trouble. He picked up his shopping bag and started to run to the exit. His friend Kyle came running to the counter and started to take his clothes off. The man was insane. He took off his belt, pulled his trousers down, and then picked up a milk jug. He screamed once again. You can't treat us like this! We are not scum! And then he started pouring the milk over his head. The store was a complete mess. People were panicking, seeing this man's behavior. Finally, the Kmart security rushed in. They dragged the guy out. When the police came over, we found out these two homeless men robbed an old lady in the park before coming to Kmart. The fat guy was arrested later that day. Both of them are behind bars now. I don't know whose fault it was that day, but it makes me sad to think about the kind of paths people choose to make money in this world, even if it ends up driving them crazy. Hey guys, thanks so much for all the support. If you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, please feel free to do so. My name is Kevin, and I used to be an urban exploration YouTuber. I must admit that my channel wasn't the one with the most views, but I already had a lot of loyal fans that would watch me no matter what. I started making horror videos where I would enter haunted houses or unfinished buildings with friends, but after a while, I started to get bored. I never saw anything paranormal. My views also went down. Apparently, horror was no longer trendy. I started to see what channels similar to mine were doing to stay relevant and they all seem to follow the same trend. Challenges. 24 hours in Walmart. 24 hours locked in Dollar Tree. 24 hours in Best Buy. I clicked on one of those videos and watched as other urban explorers hid in different parts of the supermarket, came out and started filming the place at night. I couldn't figure out what was so interesting about it, but the views of these people were incredible. So I had to take advantage of this opportunity. I headed to a Kmart that was a few blocks from my house. I couldn't bring any food or water, since they would check me before I went in, but I had some money, and this Kmart had its own food court. I spent the day eating, going to some free games, and wandering all over the supermarket. Several hours passed until a guard grabbed my arm and stopped me. Well, boy, what are you doing? What do you mean? I I'm shopping. Bullshit. You've been hanging around here for hours. You're planning to steal, aren't you? I don't know what you're talking about, sir. I'm just shopping. If I'm late, it's because I'm buying time to get back to my house. Take off your jacket right now. After looking it up and down and touching my pockets without my permission, he gave me back the jacket. Get out as soon as you can, and don't try anything funny. I'll be watching you, kid. After that, all the guards started to look at me strangely, so I avoided them as much as I could, or stayed in the bathroom for long periods. In the meantime, I watched my cell phone battery and filmed myself from time to time so I could make the video later. Around closing time, I found the perfect hiding place, in the mattress section. 
There were several holes I could squeeze through. I waited until there were no guards around, slipped out quickly, and after filming the hiding place, I fell asleep. I woke up to the vibration of my cell phone. It was the alarm that indicated it was 3 a.m. I thought I heard a noise outside, so I slowly peeked out of the small space I had crawled through. After trying to look out, I could not hide my fear of what I had just seen. It was a person staring at me from behind the hole. Something was wrong. His face was torn and his piercing eyes full of veins were looking everywhere and nowhere at once. His bald head revealed many spots extending to the back of his neck and his few remaining teeth seemed intentionally sharpened. This person was trying to get inside, but suddenly a pair of legs passed by him and something pulled him by the neck. As I listened, as the footsteps moved away, I looked out to see what had happened and saw them. A man in a tunic was walking casually away. In his hand, he held a leash carrying this man who was in his underwear and smelled everywhere as if he was some kind of wild animal. Terrified, I came out of my hiding place and filmed this person from behind, avoiding at all times for him to see me. After taking a few steps, I looked to my side and my eyes widened. There were women in robes standing around an unconscious man. There were red candles everywhere and they were making strange lipstick drawings on him. Far behind them, a man in a blank white mask was trying to climb up the shelves and shouting, looking around. <coughs> At that moment, I discovered that these were casual invaders. The whole Kmart was surrounded by them. I heard footsteps and voices all over the place. It was a miracle that so far, no one had seen me. I ran desperately to my hiding place, and with tears in my eyes, I entered without making a noise and immediately covered the hole. Already in the dark, I took a deep breath and turned on my cell phone again. But as soon as the whole space was illuminated, I was met with eyes I had seen before. The animalistic looking man was in front of me, waiting for me. I carefully ran across the mattress to get away, but it was too late. Whoever my attacker was, was already on top of me. Please don't! I just wanted to make a video! I, I just wanted people to see me! These words meant nothing to my attacker, and I knew it. But I needed to say them anyway, ignoring me. This being put four fingers inside my mouth and began to pull down. An inexplicable pain shot through my jaw. I felt that all my nerves were reacting, and that any moment my jaw was going to be detached from my mouth. I tried to kick and throw punches, but it was all in vain. I was going to die for making a stupid video and I wasn't even going to understand why. The skin on my mouth was starting to lose resistance when suddenly a voice shouted in the distance. Pedro, where have you gone? Come here! As soon as the words finished echoing through the hiding place, the being stopped its attack and ran away, forgetting about my existence and leaving me alone. I covered the place again with the mattress and lay there in the darkness, breathing deep and paralysed. In the morning, I still had not been able to close my eyes from the experience I had lived the night before. Suddenly, a ray of light entered my hiding place, and before I could understand what was happening, the policeman from the day before pulled me by the neck and slammed me against the wall. What the hell are you doing here, you fucking brat? <clears throat> Without letting me finish, and still holding me by the neck, he pushed my body again and again against the wall. I told you not to try anything funny. Are you stupid? What the hell did you see last night? Are you alone? The man slammed me harder and harder and not knowing what to say to him, I grabbed my cell phone from my pocket and pointed it at him. I had to think of a lie fast or I could end up dead. Don't do anything to me. I'm in the middle of a live broadcast, okay? Everyone will know your face. What? I took advantage of that moment of distraction to kick him and run. I sped out of the Kmart, and to my surprise, the man was running after me. Fortunately for me, our age difference was noticeable, and after a few blocks, I lost him. As soon as I got home, I unlinked as many things as I could from that cell phone and permanently closed my YouTube channel. My brother was very computer savvy, so with his help, I managed to get into the deep levels of the deep web to investigate. I found out that during the night, some supermarket chains are the meeting point for various cults and sects composed of dark and dangerous people. The authorities of these places not only know what is going on, 
but because they are linked to powerful people, they allow it. I found out that the being who had attacked me was just another victim. One of the thousands of people who had been kidnapped or sold as a baby, then tortured and trained to the point of believing that he was nothing more than an obedient animal. After reading all this, my brother started to laugh and asked me why I was looking for this. I laughed with him and never told him or anyone else the truth. I permanently abandoned urban explorations and my dream of being famous and from that night on, I spent my days in hiding, praying that no one would come looking for me or my family. Have you ever thought you were safe? I hope so, but at the same time, I wish not. Anyone knows the world is dangerous, and yet sometimes, when you feel confident, it's easy to forget. You think, what could happen? Nothing ever happens, and that's why you get distracted. But you always have to be vigilant. I learned that the hard way. Penny, let's go! A few months ago, on a Saturday afternoon like any other, I got ready to go shopping with my six-year-old, Penny. Usually we all went together, my husband Harry, Penny and I, but that week had been pretty tiring for him, so I told him to stay home and rest. But, honey... Don't worry, I'll take care of everything. Then I kissed him on the cheek. You stay here, we'll be back in no time. Penny, where are you? Mommy, I need help. After helping my daughter put on her favorite coat, we both got in the car. Soon, I started heading toward the store where I frequently bought what I needed, a Kmart close to home. We arrived in less than 20 minutes. That's when I got out of the car and then helped Penny do it. Soon, I took her hand and we started walking toward the entrance of the store. Mommy, why isn't Daddy with us? He had to stay at home. Why? Penny was quite a curious girl, sometimes too much. Are you gonna buy me candy? <laughs> I will, if you behave yourself. Finally, I let go of my daughter's hand to grab the shopping cart, and together we began to walk the aisles of Kmart. I started to grab some of the things I needed to buy, like rice, chickpeas, cereal and granola bars, when Penny wandered off to check out some desserts. Of course, I soon approached her. Penny, baby, you can't walk away like that. Why not? I was bored and wanted to see this. It looks yummy. We'll see in the end if we take it, okay? But mommy, I want it. As my daughter complained, I couldn't help but notice the person walking down the same aisle, not far from us. He was a very tall man with brown hair and a neat, well-groomed appearance. But still, when he looked at me, a bad feeling washed over me. I don't usually feel things like that about people, but there was something wrong with his expression and the way he smiled at me and Penny that made me so uncomfortable that I grabbed her right wrist with one of my hands and pushed the shopping cart with the other to get us away from there. Mommy, I don't want to go! Mommy! Penny, calm down, please. Why are you behaving like this? Let go! She was pulling on her own wrist for me to let her go. Don't go away, okay? No! <sighs> Once I released her, she stopped whimpering and looked at me. Stay with me, Penny. Yes, Mommy. In the next aisle were the kitchen utensils. I actually needed to buy some, so I stared at them for a while. Sometimes having so many options was more tiring than enjoyable. Mommy, I'm bored. I know, you already told me, just wait a bit. Why does it take you so long? I wanna leave, I miss daddy. I know, Penny. Her attitude was beginning to annoy me quite a bit. She didn't behave like that very often. Daddy would buy me candy if he was here. That was the comment that broke the camel's back. Penny, stop it. Be quiet or I won't buy you any candy. My daughter just looked at me in silence with tears in her eyes. But after that, she didn't speak again. In fact, minutes passed and she was too quiet. Penny? As I turned around and surveyed the aisle, my daughter was not there. 
Penny! Penny, where are you? I grabbed the shopping cart and quickly headed for the candy aisle. But to my surprise, she wasn't there. It was at that moment that a lump formed in my throat. I left the shopping cart there, in the middle of the aisle, and started running around the place, looking for my daughter. People turned to see me when they heard me, but I didn't care. I just wanted to find my little daughter, but she was nowhere to be seen. Penny! At one point, a guard approached me. Is something wrong, ma'am? I was so worried that breathing became more and more difficult each time. Then I realized I was hyperventilating. My... my daughter! My vision blurred as my eyes were covered with tears. She... she was with me a second ago, and now I can't find her. Oh, keep, keep calm, okay, ma'am? We'll help you. Hey, what is your daughter like? She's barely six years old. She's very short. She's blonde, has freckles, and was wearing a yellow coat. Okay, uh, we'll start looking for her right away. I kept running through the halls, when suddenly, my cell phone started to ring. I wasn't going to answer, but when I took it out of my bag, I saw that it was Harry, so I did. Hello, honey. Is everything going all right? Harry, I... Penny. <laughs> hey, w what's going on? I can't find her. What? I was with her and... Suddenly, in the distance, I saw a door that said authorized personnel only. But what caught my attention was that it was open. I have to go. I ran to the door and entered. Then I started to hear a whimper. At the end of the hall, to the left, was another door ajar. Let me go! I don't want to! I don't care! Let me go! I want to go with my mom! Listen, you stupid girl! Your fucking pathetic mother will be dead if you don't go with me, understand? No, please! I thought so. Then you'll have to come. We're going to have a lot of fun, you see. You're going to play with me, and I'll give you all the candies you want. But I don't want to. I want Mom and Dad. Shut up! Ah! The last thing I heard before opening the door was the sound of a slap and the scream of my daughter. It was that tall man who was there, holding her wrist. Let her go! I'll call the police! Mommy! The man's face turned pale when he saw me. In fact, he was in such shock that my daughter took advantage of it, let go, and ran into my arms. I welcomed her with a hug to protect her from him. Without waiting any longer, the man ran off. Fucking coward! He got into a car and drove away. Mommy! Penny! Oh my god! When we returned to the guard, we told him what had happened. He recommended that we report it to the police, which we did together with my husband the next day. I keep hoping they find this man and stop him from trying to do to another girl what he tried to do to my daughter.